Hey guys, so we're going to finish off this bit on geometric series for now before we make it a bit more complicated later on and we're going to be now looking at things to do with the sum of the, the geometric series, the sum, sorry, the sum of the first n terms of a geometric series. This should remind you of when we did, if I can find it, the sum of an arithmetic series like we had here. So this was our sum of an arithmetic series. We also had this alternative formula about first and last. We're now going to try and do arithmet a geometric series instead. So the formula for geometric series is this that we have here. Now I'm not sure if this is in the formula book. That's something I'd need to check for you. Um, but it says that the sum of the first n terms is a brackets 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. You may see a different version of this formula, which I'm going to show you, but it's the exact same thing apart from it's just been multiplied by minus 1. So you get a brackets r n minus 1 over 1 sorry, over r minus 1. Just multiplying the top by minus 1 and the bottom by minus 1, and you come up with this one here. But this is the one that I will be using. So if you do ever see something that looks really similar to it, but it's a bit different, it is just the numerator and denominator have been multiplied by minus 1. Okay, so we're going to try and do this proof, and it has come up in an exam in the past, um, so I just think it's worth being as prepared as possible. So it doesn't take exactly the same format as the other one. So I'm actually going to start writing out what the sum actually is. So it's a series, which means you're taking the first term and you're adding on the second term and the third term and, oh, not to the power of n, squared. And I'm going to put dot, dot, dot just to show that it's going to keep going. And you're going to be doing that multiplied by r to the power of n minus 2. And then the last one, if you remember, would be a r to the power of n minus 1. Now, what I'm going to do as a trick here is I'm going to take this sequence and I'm actually going to multiply everything by r. So I'm going to take that series, I should have said not sequence, and I'm going to multiply it all by r. So if I multiply this by r, I get a r. And I'm just going to write it underneath here. If I multiply this by r... I get a r squared. And all of them are going to be multiplied by r. Now, the one that would have been multiplied by r would have been a r to the n minus 3, which would become an a r to the n minus 2. This one, when it multiplies by r, would become a r to the n minus 1. And this one, when it multiplies by r, would just be a r to the n. So I'm just going to draw what happened here. When we multiplied it by r, we got this one. We got this one. This multiplies into something over here. Something else over here multiplied to this one. When you multiply this by r, you get this. And when you multiply this by r, you get this. So you've still got n terms here. They've just all been multiplied by r. Now, these all match. So the great thing that we would want to do here is to get rid of them. So the way I'm going to get rid of them is I'm going to do this top equation here, which is number 1. And I'm going to subtract the second equation. So I'm going to do number 1 take away number 2. So if I do this one take away this one, I would have stick here, I would have the sum to n minus r lots of the sum to n is equal to, well, I've got all of this, take away all of this. This, this, when I take away this, will cancel. This, when I take away this, is, can is going to cancel. So I just get a here, and when I subtract all of this, all of this goes, but I'm also trying to subtract this as well. So I subtract a r to the n as well. Now this formula is almost the same as this. I'm going to factorise the left hand side, so I get Sn1 minus r, and I'm going to factorise the right hand side, so I get 1 minus r to the n, and then I'm going to get that Sn is equal to a brackets 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Now, if you wanted to prove this one, the only thing that you would do different, instead of doing 1 minus 2, you would just do 2 minus 1, and you'd very quickly just come up to this other version. But like I said, I'm just going to be using this version of the formula all the time. Okay? So, let's use it. We want to find the sum of the first 10 terms of this particular series uh, sequence, but we're going to change it into a, a series here. So, we do the same thing that we've always been doing, we extract the information, so a is 3 and r is 2, and we're going to say that we want to find out the sum of the first 10 terms, so I'm going to just use the formula, so the sum of the first 10 terms is going to be 3 brackets, 1 minus 2 to the power of 10, notice how this is not an n minus 1, it's just an n for this formula, okay, it's slightly different, and that's all going to be over 
1 minus 2. So we can either put it straight into our calculator or we can see that we would have, in fact I'm just going to put it straight into the calculator because why not? So that's 3 times 1. Notice that the numerator will be negative and the denominator will also be negative. And so you get the sum of the first 10 terms is 3069, 3069. Same thing for this. We're going to extract the information. So A is equal to 4. That's the first term. The common ratio, as you look, what's happening is it's going across, is a half. So we're going to try and find out the sum of the first 10 terms. So the sum of the first 10 terms is um, A brackets 1 minus R to the n all over 1 minus r. So I might do this one um, all in the calculator again, so that's 4 brackets 1 minus 0 0.5 to the 10, because I don't like typing fractions, and 1 minus 0 0.5 on the bottom, and we end up with 7.992187 and it makes sense that it's got this long trailing of numbers here um, because they're all fractions that we're adding on. It also makes sense that the last number is a 5 if you think about how these numbers would be as decimals as well. So I'm just going to leave it in that form. I wouldn't round it. What I might do alternatively is I might write it as a fraction, which is 1023 over 128 because this is a pure type of maths. So we want to give exact forms where possible. Okay, it then says find the least value of n, so the smallest value of n, such that, such that the sum of this series would exceed 2 million. So we better find out what the sum of the series is. Well, first of all, a is 1, r is 2, it's a doubling series, and we're going to try and find out what the sum to n is. So the sum to n is going to be a brackets 1 minus r to the n, all over 1 minus r. Now we might like to do a bit of simplifying here. So we've got 1 minus 2 to the n on the top, and on the bottom we've got 1 minus 2, which is minus 1. So if you want to divide this by minus 1, it's the same as multiplying the top and bottom by minus 1. So it's just 2 to the n minus 1 over 1. So that must mean that the sum to n of this series is 2 to the n minus 1. And we want the sum of the series to exceed 2 million. In other words, we want 2 to the power of n minus 1 to be bigger than 2 million. So that's 2 to the power of the n, of 2 to the power of the n, 2 to the power of n to be bigger than 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2 million and 1. So take logs of both sides. So I'm going to get n ln 2 is greater than ln of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2 million and 1. So n has got to be greater than the ln of 2 million and 1. Keep thinking I've not done enough zeros, but I have divided by ln 2. So n has got to be greater than this. So that's 2 million and 1 divided by ln 2. So we need that n has got to be greater than 20.93. So n is an integer, so n has got to be equal to 21, it's the least value that n could be, and we can just check that, if I substitute 21 in here, so I do 2 to the power of 21 minus 1, that is definitely bigger than 2 million, it's 2,097,151, if I tried it instead and I did it with 20, so I did 2 to the power of 20 minus 1, you just get 1,048,575, so it hasn't exceeded 2,000. So that's us done on an inequalities type question. You're going to have a go at doing this one here. I'm going to go through the answers in just a second, and then after you've done that, you're going to do exercise 3D for me. And that's us done with sort of the, those basic skills of arithmetic and geometric series and sequences. Um, and then we do a few more kinds of things with this. This topic is not over yet. There's still a few more things we're going to be doing. So pause the video here, have a go at this one, and then we'll go through it together. Okay, so the second and third terms of a geometric sequence are 192 and 144 respectively. 
So it goes, this is the second, this is the third. So find the common ratio. Well, we know the common ratio is just to do this one divided by this one. So the common ratio is 144 over 192. 144 over 192, which is 3 quarters or 0 0.75. I'm not sure which I prefer. I'm going to go with 0 0.75. It then wants us to find out what the first term is. So to go from this one to this one, we were dividing by 0 0.75. And so we're going to do the same thing again. <coughs> so I'm going to do, to find out what the first term is, uh, well, I guess we could say, okay, 192, this is maybe an easier way, is the second term, so it's just A, R. So 192 equals 0 0.75 A. So A is equal to 1972. 1972, 192 divided by 0 0.75, which is 256. And it's a bigger number, which is what we're expecting. So we can now see that the sequence goes 256, 192, 144. And I would just check that that actually makes sense. If I multiplied that by 0 0.75, yeah, that works as I get that. So I've done this, I've done this. It then wants the smallest value of n for which the sum of the first n terms of the series exceeds 1,000. So this time we're talking about the sum of the series. So you better make sure that we're using our Sn formula, which is a brackets... 1 minus r to the n all over 1 minus r. So I'm going to do a little bit of simplifying here. I'm going to do the 256 divided by the 0 0.25 that's on the bottom. So we get 1024, 1 minus 0 0.75 to the power of n. And I want to know when the sum of this series is going to be bigger than 1,000. So I get 1,024, 1 minus 0.75 to the power of n to be bigger than 1,000. So I get this. Make sure you rearrange this carefully. So I'm going to get my 1 minus... 1,000 over 1,024, and I get my 0 0.75 to the power of n. I'm actually going to go from here, I'm going to give myself a bit more space, I'm going to come up to this bit. So that's 1 minus 1,000 over 1,024, so that's 3 over 128 equals 0 0.75 to the power of n. So I'm going to take logs of both sides. Some reason I've decided I was going to switch to an equal sign. Don't ask me why I did that. Now we get this. We get ln of 3 over 128 divided by ln of 0 0.75. I'm going to show you what might happen here. So when we divide this by this, ln of 0 0.75, if you think carefully, is actually a negative number. So let me just quickly say this over here ln of 0 0.75 is a negative number. Now, if you're going to divide by ln of 0 0.75, you're going to be divided by a negative number. So that's actually going to switch this around like this. So you actually get that n is ln of 3 over 128 divided by ln of 0 0.75. Remember, when you divide by a negative or multiply by a negative, the inequality symbol switches. So I'm going to do ln of 3 over 128 divided by ln of 0 0.75 and we get that n has got to be greater than 13.04 so n has got to be 13, uh, 13, 14, gosh it's not a good morning for me. Now if you didn't realise that this was negative you would have come up with a statement like this that n has got to be less than 13.04. But that doesn't really make any sense. How could n be the smallest value of n where n is less than 13.04? You could have said that n was 0, or n was 1, or n was 2, and it wouldn't have made any sense for it to exceed 1,000. So just think carefully about if you come up with a statement that doesn't make any sense, at some point, have you divided by a negative number? Because if you've divided by a negative number, then your inequality symbol is going to need to switch around. Okay, so let me just quickly erase that bit there and this bit here. So you've now got enough work to be able to do for me exercise 3D as well, guys, and enjoy. Speak soon. Bye.